We got another former El Paso, Texas evangelist. He's the new T.L. Osborne for the body of Christ, and he's one of our own, ICFM. Would you all welcome evangelist Daniel King? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm Daniel King. I'm a missionary evangelist. Go all over the world preaching the gospel. When I was 15 years old, I was reading a success book. It said, if you want to be successful, you need to write down your goals. And one of the goals the book said would be good for young people is to make a million dollars before the age of 30. How many of you would like to make a million dollars before the age of 30? What about by the age of 60 for some of you? 90 for a few of you? Well, I realized that because of my upbringing as a missionary in Mexico, that money was not what was important. What was important was souls. And so at the age of 15, I wrote down, I, Daniel King, want to lead one million people to Jesus before I turn 30 years of age. Instead of trying to become a millionaire, I wanted to lead a million heirs into the kingdom of God. And so God started opening up doors in different nations. And I'm excited to tell you that by the time I reached 30, I completed that goal of leading a million people to Jesus. And this year I'm 37 and, and we just reached our second million uh, this last year. And so it took me 15 years for the first million and seven years for the second million. And I'm believing for a million a year. That's what I'm asking God to give me. So things are accelerating. Jesus is coming soon. So soon, don't eat dessert. Jesus is coming so soon, don't buy any green bananas. And so we're doing a a big outreach in the nation of Belize this coming year. Uh, Pastor Chas and Joni are coming down. We have uh, a variety of different evangelists that are going to be helping us out. Uh, and we're going to try to take the entire nation for Jesus. In Isaiah, there's a verse that says, Can a nation be saved in a day? And we believe the answer is yes. And we believe that we can take the nation of Belize for Jesus. And so I have some information about that. If you guys would like to come to Belize, um, who would help, like to help me pass these out? Who can? Would you? All right. Thank you. Just give one to everyone. And uh, I've enjoyed what everyone has said. And uh, I'm glad I'm last because now I can focus on the most important thing. <laughs> and that is souls. <laughs> Amen. Between the time of Jesus' ascension, uh, his resurrection and his ascension, he had one thought on his mind. And so let's read what Jesus said right at the end of Matthew chapter 28. Verse 19, Jesus said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So everyone say, go and make disciples. Now turn with me over to Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those that believe. In my name, they'll drive out demons, they'll speak in new tongues, they'll pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They'll place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. Everyone say, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now turn with me to Luke chapter 24, verse 47. It says, repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, you will be witnesses of these things. Everyone say, forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Now John 20, 21. Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Everyone say, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Now, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost ends of the earth. Everyone say, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witness. 
So Matthew 28 says, go and make disciples. Mark chapter 16 says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Luke chapter 24 says, forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. John 20 says, as the Father has sent me, even so send I you. Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power and you will be my witnesses. And so Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts five times between the time of his resurrection and his ascension, Jesus has this powerful instruction for us to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. Now, how many of you think if Jesus repeats something five times, maybe we should listen? How many of you think that's true? A few weeks ago, Jessica woke up in the morning and she remembered that we didn't have any bread in the house. So we're still laying in bed, but she's stretching and she says, just Daniel, later on when you go to the store, make sure you bring home some bread. And I was half asleep. I said, yes, I love, I'll do that. Then we go to the breakfast table. She wanted toast, but again, there's no bread. And so again, she reminds me, go make sure you get some bread. And so I'm taking my son, Caleb, he's six years old, to school. And I'm putting him in the car. We're, we're backing the car out of the, the garage, and the door opens, and I, I push the button on the window, and it goes down, and I stick my head out, and Jessica says, Daniel, make sure you get the bread. You got it, honey. So then I'm going to school. I drive Caleb to school. I'm dropping him off, and my cell phone rings. Hello? Yes, honey, I just dropped him off. I'm going to the store right now. Yeah. I, I didn't forget, I'm going to bring you some bread. I get to the store. I get my milk. I get my cereal. I get some, some Twinkies. And beep, beep, a text message. One word. Do you know what that word was? That's right. Now, what would happen if I went all the way back home and I forgot the bread. Come on, women. What would happen? I'd be in big trouble. Now, what would happen if Jesus comes back and we forget to do the one thing that he told us to do five times? I, I told you five times. Come on, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is the main thing. That we are called to do as pastors and ministers and evangelists is to go and to tell people about Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. All right, I want to give you an illustration. I need some help. Uh, Brother Ross, could you come up here and help me? And brother, could you come? All right, you're going to have to be quick because we don't have much time. All right, uh, I want you to stand over here. Come up, and, and brother, you come over here. Um, remind me your name? Michael. Michael and Ross. Okay. Each of them are going to represent a, a brand new pastor who's just started a new church. Both of these are men of faith. Both of them love God. Both of them uh, uh, have a big vision. But there's one difference between them. They have a slight difference in the way that they pray. And so Brother Michael, he's just started his new church. And in the church, he doesn't have any chairs and so he starts to pray and says, God, give me some chairs. Just take the microphone and say, God, give me some chairs. God, give me some chairs. I need some chairs, Lord. Praise God. Come on, let's give, come, give some praise to Jim. Now, Brother Ross, he started his church, and uh, he has a slightly different prayer. His prayer is for souls. So lift your hands to heaven and say, God, give me a soul. God, give me a soul. Amen. Now, I want you to look out, round out here, look for someone who looks like they need Jesus, and bring them back up here. Bring them up here. Come on, you got to be quick. We don't have much time. You got to go. All right, come on. Can we give God some praise? Look, somebody got saved. <laughs> and now, Brother Michael over here, he's got his beautiful chair, and then he doesn't have any microphone stand. So he starts praying, God, I need a microphone stand. I, I need a microphone stand. Jesus, I need a microphone stand. In Jesus' name. God oh, praise prayer. God. <laughs> God supplies. Praise God. God answers his prayer. And now, look, he's, 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 he's brought his wife to Jesus. Isn't that nice? And together they start praying and say, God, give us souls. Come on. And he teaches her to pray. God, give us souls. 
God bring us souls. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. All right, now I want each of you, go find someone that looks like they need Jesus and bring them back up here. You got to be quick. You got to be quick. Come on. Don't lollygag. This is... Jesus is coming soon. We need to get somebody saved. All right, praise God. And so they start teaching them to pray for souls. Now, now Brother Michael over here, um, he's praying, and, and he says, God, uh, you know, I, I really need a, a nice new podium to preach from. God, I need a nice new podium, a cool-looking podium so I can be super hip, yeah, so I can that. be hippie. And, and see, look, God supplies his need. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's exercising his faith. He's got his vision out there. And wow, he's got a nice new podium. All right, and now over here, the whole church is praying for souls. God, give us souls. Come on, come on st- pray, pray for souls. God, Lord, give us God, souls. Thank you, Lord, for souls. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for Hallelujah. souls. All right, each of you, go find someone that needs Jesus and bring them back up here. Yeah, we, I, I've been praying for Pastor Tom to get saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, look at this. Look at all these people that are getting saved. Now, this is a good church. Isn't that a good church? And now, boom, in one night, Jesus returns. <laughs> Oops. Now, Pastor Michael is a man of faith. And so he gets to go to heaven. But Pastor Michael, when you go to heaven, you can't take your podium with you to heaven. When you go to heaven, you're going to be standing in front of the throne room of Christ. You can't take that chair with you to heaven. You can't take that mic. You, you get to go to heaven, but none of those things you've been praying for, you can't take your clothes to heaven. You can't take your nice house to heaven. You can't take your car with you to heaven. None of those things that people pray for is going to matter 10,000 years from now. But Pastor Ross, not only do you get to go to heaven, look at all these people you get to take with you to heaven. The only thing you can take with you to heaven is people. So where should the focus of our prayers be? Where should the focus of our our effort be? Where should the focus of our preaching be? It's got to be here. It's got to be for people. All right. We're going to give you... Another illustration. I want you guys to get in a circle. Get in a circle really quickly. Get in a circle. Now this circle is going to represent a church. Now how could we make this circle maybe a better circle? Maybe if you guys got in closer. Yeah? Kind of a huddle there. You know, th- this, is, this, is a, this circle is going to represent a church. This is a typical church. Uh, not, not an ICFM church. Somebody else's church. Um. <laughs> Maybe, how could we make this better? Maybe if you put your arms around each other and just got in really tight, really close. Now, often when the world looks at a church, this is what they see. Did you notice when I told them to get in a circle, none of them faced outward? They all faced inward. And this is a problem that a lot of churches have is they're not focused outward, they're focused inward. And this church looks like it could be a good club to be in if you had a way to get in. It looks like they're kind of friendly, they're nice to each other. You know, but looking at this circle, it doesn't really look like there's a place for me. It doesn't look, and and a lot of people, when they look at the church in America, they look and they see the church's back turned to them. Maybe it look, it's a nice place to be, but it doesn't look like there's a place for me. It doesn't look friendly. They don't have any parking for new visitors. They don't have uh, anybody greeting them at the door. If they do, it's like, ah, don't sit in my seat. 
That's where I always sit, you know. And, and there's no friendly. And, and people look at church. This is what they see. But I don't think this is the type of church God has called us to be. Now, we need to be connected. That's important. But at the same time as we're connected, we also need to reach out to the community. And so I want each of you put one hand in and with your other hand, reach out and smile at people and, and say, and, and maybe you wave at them or say, hey, look, here's a place for me. Now, doesn't this look like the type of church that you would want to go to? You know, right here, we could start a, a, a new women's ministry. We could start a, an outreach here to, to, uh, to, for children. We could start an outreach. You know, here's a place for people to be connected. You know, over here, we can start a, a, a ministry for the young people. This is the kind of church that God is calling us to be, a church that is reaching out to the community, an outreach-oriented church. And look, now... There is a place for me. Mama T, come up here. There is a place for you. Come on, get connected right here. Brother, come on up here. There's a place for you to get connected. Come on, Brother Aaron, get, get up here. Get connected to the church. Pastor Chaz, get connected. Come on, guys, come on. In fact, I want everybody to be connected. Get connected to the church. Come on, everybody, get connected. This is the kind of church God has called us to be, a church that connects with the community, a church that is outreach-oriented, a church that there is a place for every single person to be a part of what God is doing. How many of you want to have this kind of church? I believe God can do it for us. Come on, lift up your hands to heaven. Let's just thank him. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are giving ICFM churches that are growing Ministries that are reaching out, that are making a difference, that are impacting lives around the world, impacting communities that are focused on souls, keeping the main thing, the main thing. Lord, we want to be the kind of churches that make a difference in the lives of people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Was that a great way to end the morning? And that's why, you know, look, I, I'm not a stupid. I put Daniel King at the end on purpose because I knew what he's going to preach on souls.